What is it about characters in movies that we like so much? What is it about not only the way that the characters are written, but also the actors who portray them? How is it that this appeals to us so much? Oh, well, they're very relatable. That's what we often hear, right? Is that people say, I identify with this character. I relate to them so much. But the emotional reaction is not just for those that we identify with. It's also for those that we hate. And there are certain villains that we love to hate. I'm sure you've heard that expression. So if you love to hate the villain, you love the hero, and you might also love the supporting characters, what's really going on here? If we relate in part to each of those characters, if this character is the good side of me, this character is the bad side, but this one's the intellectual side, this is the one that is driven by desire, this is the one that's driven by fame, and all of a sudden, we start seeing those characters as different aspects of our own personality. In other words, it's as if the stage that's actually the stage, the movie set, is more like the theater of the mind, in which our own personality plays out, played by all kinds of different roles. Now, this gets better because that is the conception of the ancient Greek pantheon. In other words, the gods of polytheistic societies work in very much the same way. And what we notice about the gods of ancient Greece and of polytheistic societies in general is that they tend to be named after parts of human experience, parts of the mind. And so, it's not obvious with the ancient Greek gods because we don't translate the names, but it's more obvious if we look at what the names actually mean. And so, oftentimes, the god of desire is actually named desire, which is the case in ancient Greece because that's eros. Eros is desire. (laughs) The god of sleep might actually be named sleep. Hypnos means sleep. The god of memory might be named memory. Mnemosyne means memory, and so on. The examples can be multiplied endlessly for this sort of thing. And so, the Greek pantheon represents a kind of splitting of personality and aspects of the world that are important to us internally and otherwise into all of these different personalities in the pantheon. Now, coming full circle to movies, Is it the case that one of the reasons that we like characters in movies so much is because it is an extension of and may be a kind of modern-day polytheism, where the aesthetic enjoyment that we get out of movies is actually a reflection of and may be a modern manifestation of the same sort of enjoyment that ancient Greek audiences got out of listening to their myths being sung, seeing them being performed and thinking about them in just the same way that we relate to movies. It's not a coincidence that the novel arose as an art form, and later, of course, vaudeville and then the movies, which are just the modern manifestation of that same kind of thing, poetry even, all of these things rose to prominence as art forms in the vacuum that was left by Christianity splitting into pieces with the Reformation. And so as Christianity lost its hegemony over the medieval world and we moved into the Renaissance and beyond, there was a vacuum of meaning, a vacuum of need, really, that people looked to other sources to try and find some form of fulfillment that they just weren't, for whatever reason, able to get in what was left of religion at that time. And so the novel the movie, the characters in the novels? Should we be surprised that the art form that moves in to replace it is in fact just another manifestation of that same kind of thing that we saw so long ago with the ancient Greek gods and with polytheistic societies before them? Now, take this and apply it to dramas that we're familiar with, not only in the movies and in books and plays, but also in philosophical circles where we have dialogues. So, with Kierkegaard's dialogues, with his pseudonyms, should we think of those pseudonyms as being little gods, as being characters that have a role in a drama that we should make sense of vis-a-vis polytheism? Is that also the case with Plato? 
Now, I think things get a little more complicated with Plato, and they're a little more complicated in general in dealing with this with philosophy, because philosophy has other aims that are more consciously directed and not just a kind of inspired story. So there are things that people are specifically trying to do, specifically trying to argue. But nevertheless, the vestiges of personality, insofar as those characters have certain kinds of personalities, those things should be remembered and perhaps interpreted and understood in the context of ancient polytheism, made modern, made manifest in dialogue form. And indeed, even with Plato, what we see is a kind of movement away from the old polytheism, so witness the you know, war that he has against the poets in the Republic and all the bad things that he has to say about those who slander the gods, at the same time that he's telling his own stories with his own interlocutors and personalities and emotions and events and things as part of the dramatic setting that are not ostensibly related directly to philosophic argumentation. Should we understand those as extensions of the old polytheistic system where we have little gods, little inflections in terms of, in the form of, personalities and dramatic pieces of the story? Maybe.